Today's video is brought to you by lfcamerastore.com. So I'm back out in southern Wales today. I actually haven't been here uh, since my last visit here, the episode I did, which was I think about a couple months ago now. This area that I'm at is probably going to look familiar. I wanted to come back and shoot this scene on large format. I actually uh, brought a brand new 4x5 camera with me today that I haven't used yet, so I figured this could be a good area just to come, you know, create a couple images, test it out, get a feel for things, and just talk about my thoughts a little bit. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. And it's starting to rain, which is uh, not completely unexpected. So let's get up there. So lately I've partnered up with my buddy Eamon at LF Camera Store. He's a new sponsor for the channel. He uh, sells like higher end 4x5 and 8x10 cameras. Uh, if you watch this channel, you'll know that I own an Intrepid 4x5 for a little bit uh, now, though I've been looking to upgrade just to something like maybe a little bit more refined. I still think the Intrepid is an incredible deal, especially if you're just starting out. I'm gonna hang on to mine. Uh, but Eamon's been sending me some different cameras. Uh, so the one I have with me today is the one that, uh, fingers crossed, I think is gonna be the one. It's by a company uh, called, I think it's Stenopica. Steno, Stenopica, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but it's their Michelangelo 4x5, one of their newer cameras. It looks very nice. You know, I've played around with it a little bit at home, but uh, the plan today really is just to get out, shoot a couple initial frames with it, make sure everything's working, and then figured I'd just do like a little bit of a setup, run through some things with it, and give you my initial impressions. Okay, so I actually have no idea how this is gonna sound. It's so windy up here, so this is gonna make things a little tricky for filming today, but I'll show you where we are. Like I said, in a previous video I was out here, I made an image uh, on the Pentax 6.7 with a 75 mil. Was really happy with it, but wanted to come back, shoot on four by five. And I'm glad that we're here, actually. You can see this old uh, coal mine here, but they're actually, it looks like they're tearing it down, which is kind of sad. So glad I got back out here. Uh, sky is pretty cool. It actually looks like it's gonna rain over there, but there is some like patchiness with light areas and whatnot. So I think what we're, we're gonna do though is I'm gonna set up the camera over there in the woods uh, just so you can actually hear what I'm saying and then we'll bring it out here to shoot afterwards. May go make some images after that uh, and then depending on if I end up out here uh, I may try and stick to the evening, come back to the spot and see if there's like maybe some nice directional light if these clouds break up uh, right in the evening which could be cool. So anyways let's go uh, do a little bit of an overview of this thing. Okay, so I think I found a spot, gonna make this work, but uh, this is the camera. Stenopica is a company based out of Italy, so all of their cameras are handmade, just beautiful quality. The first, that was the first thing that jumped out uh, at me when I opened up the box. This thing was actually shipped to me in a crate, which was kind of hilarious. But this camera is made out of uh, cypress wood and carbon fiber, so just very nice to look at. The actual quality of it looks pretty incredible. Uh, so one of the nicest four by fives that I've seen in person, uh, for sure. But the first thing that was really important to me with a new 4x5 was just getting something that has like hard stops for the movements or like zero positions. So you'll see uh, as you lift up the rear standard, it just kind of falls into place, which is very nice. And then let me just get this leveled out a little bit. Same thing on the front standard as well. So you lift this up. And both sides here just fall into place. And then as well, the front standard has these clips, carbon fiber clips underneath, and then those just kind of zero at the height and also the tilt for the front standard. So very nice to set up with those hard stops, just knowing everything's good to go. You can level out your tripod and have a nice kind of base to start with. Um, when it comes to actual movements, uh, it has pretty much everything that you would expect on like a fully featured field camera. So it has rise, fall, shift, swing and tilt. It has a shift on the rear and swing and tilt as well. So super nice. And then all of these movements uh, also have zero position. So you'll see on the front, I'll get a close up of this, but they just have these very nice clicks when you get back to center. So that's for the swing. And then obviously for the shift as well, just falls, like kind of snaps back into place when you get to zero position and then same on the rear. So that has been such a nice addition for me. 
like I said, with the Intrepid, that was one of the things that bothered me. It's not like a, it's a, not a huge deal. You do get used to it, uh, but just for setup and when you're using movements here and fiddling about trying to make sure that everything's kind of perfectly back in place in zero when you're done with whatever movements you're using. The cool thing with this camera as well, this isn't necessarily like a feature that would sell me personally because uh, it's not something I would use often, but it does have quite a large max extension on it, uh, especially for a field camera. So you can undo uh, these thumb screws on the bottom and then you can slide the rear back like that and you can see, hopefully it doesn't go to frame, even with the uh, standard bellows, I think it's like either 520 or 580 millimeters of extension, uh, which is huge for a field camera, especially with the standard bellows. I think uh, something like a Chamonix is in like the mid 300s and a Shen Hao too. So this is very cool. So if you're someone who wants to use longer lenses or do close focusing work, uh, it's cool that you can just like buy this as is, as it comes. You don't have to worry about getting uh, a, like a separate set of bellows and you can have that much extension uh, in this package. Uh, when it comes to weight, I, I know the aluminum version, this is obviously the carbon fiber. The aluminum version I think is around like um, 1.9 kilos. So obviously this would be a little lighter. Again, that's a nice weight for a field camera. Uh, but there's one more feature here and I actually don't know how much I'm sold on this one yet. So this is uh, the rear standard. It's a graph lock back, but to change the orientation, it's just this magnet system. So it just kind of snaps off and snaps back into place. So like, it's a great idea. I like the idea of it, but the only problem that I've run into so far, just playing with this camera in the office is that as soon as I pull out one of the film holders, sometimes I'll like pull back a little bit. I found that this has like popped off when I'm doing that. So could be one of those things where like as you use it more and develop a bit of like a system you get used to just maybe maybe you put a thumb up here or something but I would have loved to even see just like you know some sort of clip that can lock it down uh, when you know you want to stay in one of the positions just for like a little bit more stability uh, so we'll see how that goes over time and then same with the bellows they have the exact same system so magnets again, which is nice. It feels very solid and secure, but especially with this camera having so much extension as is with the standard bellows, I personally would have liked to see just like something that's a little more permanent. Maybe there's clips or something to hold it in. They do feel secure, but I'm just like, is it necessary? One of those things, but I guess that'll be different for everyone. But to overall beautiful camera, love the materials, love the functionality of it and pretty excited to use it a little more, but I think I'm going to, um, Throw in a lens, maybe the 135. Looks like it might be clearing up a little bit, so we'll try and go make an image. So I'll be honest, the conditions aren't the greatest here. I was really hoping that the cloud cover was gonna be a little lighter. Right now it's pretty thick, so like last time I was here, you had these like really nice kind of bright patches, so there was some cool contrast in the sky, but it's almost just like flat gray right now and it's windy. <laughs> so there's a little bit of definition. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this anyways, just cause I really do wanna just make sure this camera is working. See how it turns out, but I don't think it's gonna be the light that I was hoping for, unfortunately. That's fun. So waiting, 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 waiting. It looks like there might be like a hint of sunlight over there. I have no idea. I'll shoot this soon, but it is definitely not ideal conditions today. I waited out for a few more minutes. This is a cool scene though. I think I'm gonna shoot probably, I have a 180 with me as well, a Fujinon 180 mil. So I think I'll shoot on the 180 after this. The 135 actually looked a little bit wide. I can't remember uh, exactly which image it was I preferred because I shot this on the 75 and the 105 on the Pentax 6.7 and I'm kind of thinking it maybe was the 105 I liked better but just for fun I'll shoot both um, unless the light changes drastically or the weather changes drastically this is going to be like a repeat visit at this place it's all good though having fun We'll go for it. 
So I actually ended up liking this image a lot more than I thought I was going to. Uh, the rain in the distance really helps create just kind of a unique atmosphere. And I'm also starting to warm up quite a bit to Ilford HP5, especially in 4x5. Okay, so I was gonna shoot with the 180, but I think I'm gonna call that off. The weather's just kind of ridiculous up here. Bunch of wind and, uh, and rain off and on, so I think it might just be a waste of film at this point. But uh, gonna go for a drive. I have like an hour or two left, I think, of light. I would love to find one more image. There was a spot down there. I'm gonna go check out, see if I can get in there, uh, and hopefully make one more before the day's over. Okay, so just down at ground level now. Got the... Uh, mine back here but there was one composition up the road here that when I was driving earlier they locked the gates out of park down there but when I came up here earlier to turn around looked like there might have been a cool one so I'm just trying to stick in this area because I got like maybe half hour of light left and I'd love to shoot uh, this last frame before I pack it in. Okay so found an image here I think this is actually going to be pretty cool have a nice uh, reflection down here which it's a nice composition, the light isn't great, but uh, pretty much out of it. So just working with what I got. Uh, if anything, it's just one more image to make with this camera for the day. So I'm gonna shoot this and then pack it in. So this image also surprised me as well. I knew that I was gonna be happy with the composition, but there was actually some really nice, subtle tonal separation that I quite enjoy. Overall, I'm happy with both of these images, especially as this was supposed to be a test day. Okay, so that's a wrap, two images today. Ran out of light quick, there wasn't much to begin with, but uh, you know, at the very least, uh, just good to get out with this camera set it up, tear it down, get used to how it feels. And I will say I'm very happy with it so far. Those zero positions uh, are a nice feature. I found setting it up is a lot quicker and kind of feel like more confident about it right off the bat. And uh, yeah, that magnetic back, I think it's something, like I said, I'll have to grow into. I did find myself though today, just like, you know, putting my thumb there right away automatically. So I think once that habit builds up, uh, I'll feel a little more used to it. It is nice and quick for changing orientations. I will say that, you know, that last shot doing portrait style. But uh, other than that, good day. Excited to get back out when I have more light and a little more time. So hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions about this camera, uh, put them down below. I'll try my best to answer what I can. And yeah, we'll talk to you soon.